This year, TYT has been making a lot of moves. Now you can too. Now how are you going to do that? You want to launch a new business? That sounds fun. You're going to change careers. Jesus and Lord mercy. You're going to need a website for all that. Lucky for you, Squarespace also making moves. You're going to go to squarespace.com slash TYT. You're going to get 10% off your first purchase. And you're going to get to build anything you want on that website with a unique domain. What are you, crazy? Go do it now. Go. Welcome to TYT Interviews. We're going to do a, a unique one today. Um, uh, we are going to have someone else from the TYT network on uh, to discuss uh, one issue in particular, and that is Russia. Dun, 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 dun. So if you remember, you're watching this live. Everybody else, it'll go up for you soon, and you'll get to watch it uh, for yourself as well. But that's this is when you would be watching it because you're not watching it live. Okay, anyway, we go to Kyle Kalinsky from uh, Secular Talk, uh, and he is going to join us on this issue. Um, I, I brought Kyle on because he's a reasonable dude. I fancy myself a reasonable dude. Uh, and uh, we ostensibly have a disagreement on Russia. Uh, I think it's a big deal. Uh, I'm going to characterize his position as not a big deal. Uh, but luckily, he's here and can speak for himself. And what we're going to try to do first is find points of agreement, which I suspect will be plentiful, and then boil down to our disagreement on Russia, and then figure out why we uh, each have the position that we do. So, uh, Kyle, first, can I get you to agree that that was an excellent Super Bowl? Um, yes, although I do have to add the caveat that I'm one of about 17 guys in America that doesn't care at all about football. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think that I rest my case, and I will see all of you guys later. Uh, <laughs> all right, score one for me as we move forward. All right, no, seriously, uh, and, and I want to be clear, this is just a discussion. So, um, now, I, I will say that I think that Russia is a quote-unquote big deal because um, I believe that Trump did far worse than helping the Russians meddle in our elections. I believe that he did money laundering, and I think... Uh, that he owes the Russians and, and is paying them back, and I think it is uh, a wildly dangerous situation for our democracy. Okay, so what part of that, if any, do you agree with, uh, and what part do you disagree with? So I agree that uh, Trump probably did money laundering. Um, I think he did money laundering not just with Russia, I'm convinced he did it. Uh, with other actors as well. I think he's colluded with other governments, perhaps in an even more clear way than he's colluded with the Russian government, if he's indeed colluded with the Russian government at all. Um, you know, when we talk about this issue of Russiagate, I think there's, it's actually a very complicated issue because there's many different moving parts to it. So the first question is, and you just touched on it, what is Trump guilty of? Um, I would say that he's probably guilty of money laundering. Uh, I think he's guilty of collusion with Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. And um, I also think he's guilty of uh, other financial crimes with, uh, there's evidence he's done it with the mafia. He's ev there's evidence he's done it with uh, big banks and, and Wall Street firms. So generally speaking, I'd say I support what Robert Mueller is doing. But I support what Robert Mueller is doing because I, I think he can basically take out one by one Trump's cabinet on crimes like that. So for example, what he's already done with Flynn, what he's already done with Manafort, like I support that stuff and there's a, a lot of evidence uh, of the guilt of various actors in uh, Trump's administration, but I just think that the idea of Trump being Putin's puppet or Trump doing treason is basically a liberal pipe dream that's equivalent to democratic Benghazi. Because you're never going to get Trump on treason. You're never going to get Trump on being Putin's puppet. Uh, nor do I actually think he is those things. So I think that's the crux of our disagreement. All right. So um, now let me agree back with you first on a couple of issues. Um, I think that it is curious that we don't talk about Donald Trump's collusion with Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and, and some of the other countries that you mentioned. Um, now, I get why, because there is no allegations that Saudi Arabia mess with the vote. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Donald Trump has very clear financial interests in Saudi Arabia and seems to have changed our policy to suit Saudi Arabia, which is deeply problematic. And an argument could be made for Israel and certainly Turkey as well. So um, 
does the media care less about that because Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Israel, etc. are ostensibly our allies and, uh, and it's uncomfortable to talk about that and are they demagoguing Russia because it's easier? Yes. So I agree with you on that. Um, and is the Democratic Party using uh, Russia meddling in the elections as an excuse for their loss to Donald Trump? Yes, I agree with you on that. No question about that. Now, and I think there was a lot of different factors involved. Now, but if you think that Donald Trump has done the money laundering as I do, and apparently you do to some extent, isn't that kind of a big deal? Uh, to oh, sure, to sure. Paraphrase Biden. No, absolutely. I think it is. I think all all the financial stuff that you can get him on, of course it's a big deal. It's a big deal in the same way that, you know, people like us went after Hillary Clinton for the Clinton Foundation and the fact that she took a tremendous amount of money from Saudi Arabia and all these very repressive governments and then she did their bidding and helped them through policy. You know, by the same token, when you look at what Trump's done, just to give people the specifics, Jen, because I'm not sure that they know I'm not sure people know a lot about the Saudi Arabia thing or the Turkey thing or the Israel thing because again the media doesn't discuss it. But you know, in those instances, like Trump registered eight new businesses in Saudi Arabia when he was on the campaign trail. He also took two hundred and seventy thousand dollars from top Saudi officials for them to stay at his hotel, not because they actually needed to spend two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. That was a bribe. And they were paid back because Trump gave them a $350 billion weapons deal. And then, by the way, they took those weapons and turned around and they're literally committing a genocide in Yemen right now. And I don't use that word lightly. I think that's the right word to use for what Saudi Arabia is doing in Yemen with the weapons that we gave them. So I think there's a clear connection there. And I would love it if if Mueller gets him on anything, I think it'd be great. Um, but I think the thing that frustrates me is... Um, they're focusing on the flimsier case, the case of Russia, and the reason why they're doing that is because there, there are hawkish goals here, and these are the same hawkish goals that have been in place for a very long time. I'm going to use the dirty word here, but the deep state has always been standoffish against Russia. We've expanded NATO towards their border um, when we promised that we wouldn't do that, and now because we're so obsessed with Trump's connection with Russia— you find a lot of overtly hawkish rhetoric coming from Democrats. And I know that they view it as like they're resisting Trump and they're being strong on Trump. But the reality is when you have Rachel Maddow, for example, arguing that if Trump removes NATO troops from Russia's border, that somehow proves that Putin has the pee, -pee tape and therefore he's Putin's puppet and therefore Donald Trump should keep NATO troops on, Putin, uh, on uh, Russia's border. I don't agree with that. And in fact, I think that's Rachel Maddow being like very neocon hawkish and flirting with World War III because of how she's choosing to resist Trump on the Russia issue. So if they wanted to resist Trump just on the financial crimes angle, we wouldn't even be having this conversation because I'm totally on board with that. In fact, I think I'm even stronger on that issue because I could point out the thousand ways he's done the corrupt deals and he's done the collusion with other foreign governments. I mean, to give the example of Turkey, Michael Flynn took $500,000 from the Turkish government. Then Michael Flynn pushes the U.S. government to not arm the Kurds who were fighting ISIS. So that's direct money from the Turkish government, and then we did something directly to benefit the Turkish government. There's your collusion right there. That's been proven, but nobody talks about it, nobody cares, because that's not the real concern of the people who are yelping about this. The real concern is let's move to the right on foreign policy and let's be hawkish and escalate with Russia. So. <laughs> let alone Flynn's deal where they were planning to kidnap someone from America and right. deliver, yeah. deliver him to uh, Erdogan, which is just insanity. Yeah. Now look, people will say, and, and rightfully so, that's Flynn, we don't have any evidence, nor do I even suspect that Trump authorized that. Now Trump does have business dealings in Turkey, so I wouldn't put it past them and uh, be happy to do that investigation, but there isn't very much evidence of that. But there's overwhelming evidence against Flynn and, and hence the uh, plea deal that he took. Um, now on the hawkishness, look, I don't want to be hawkish towards Russia. Um, I also don't want to be naive towards Russia. I don't think that they have our best interests. Sometimes I see progressives who are like, oh my God, no, Putin and Russia could be our allies. Putin is basically a dictator uh, and if you're a progressive you should have no interest in defending Vladimir Putin 
who has been against democracy in Russia, let alone Ukraine and other places. So this whole thing of like, no, poor Putin has been, uh, uh, you know, put upon by the West. I'm not buying that. I'm not interested in dictators anywhere, including Russia. Um, but just because I don't want to be hawkish towards uh, Russia doesn't mean that we should not investigate things that Trump might have done with Russia. I think that I could have the position of no, I don't wish to go to war with Russia and I also don't wish to let them get away with whatever deal that they have with our president. Sure, that makes sure. sense? It, absolutely. If that was where it ended, I again we wouldn't be having this conversation, but I think the problem is the consequences not just from the position that you're taking right now, but the effects that this has had on the broader political scene. So, you know, just to give a few examples, it, Democrats are now in favor of arming rebels in Ukraine. And those rebels are very unsavory characters, including there's been some reporting on how there are neo Nazi rebels in Ukraine who are anti Russia. And so the idea is well, you arm them and you have a standoff over the Crimea thing. So that's not, again, you can be, like I wouldn't say I'm anywhere near pro-Putin. He, Of course, I agree with you. He's an authoritarian menace. But he's a threat to his own people. And I don't think and that- And the people of Ukraine and the people of Georgia and potentially people of Estonia. Okay, so then this gets into a, a bigger issue then. What exactly should our policies be towards Russia on that front? And you know, I've tried to make clear to my audience all along every time I talk about this issue where I stand on those policy issues. So, you know, for example, the Exxon deal. I'm against the Exxon deal. I think if Trump ends up approving that, yes, that's sign of corruption and cutting a deal. But I'm for the sanctions over Crimea tentatively because again, you have to take into account NATO's history of expanding towards Russia's border, which they view as aggression. But I'm not in favor of, for example, the uh, sanctions, the new round of sanctions over the uh, so-called election meddling. Because number one, the intelligence agencies presented zero evidence for that. And these are the same people who said that uh, Saddam did 9-11 and so we need to do the Iraq war. And number two, they were acting like there are no consequences. We keep escalating with them and keep hitting them with sanctions on top of sanctions on top of sanctions, arming rebels that are on their border. And then we expect like, oh, that he's just going to like fall back in his place. No, he's a nuclear armed power. And this is why this is a dangerous game that we're playing. Yeah. So I, look, if you say to me, um, I don't want to get into a dangerous game with Russia and arming unsavory characters in Ukraine, I'm going to agree with you mainly because whenever we go to arm unsavory characters, we don't have a great track record on that. I, I remember a uh, guy we armed back in Afghanistan that was fighting the Russians at the time, his name was Osama bin Laden. Oops. Right. That's right. right. So uh, I'm against that kind of interventionism. Uh, on the other hand, Estonia is now, whether it was right to do in the first place or not, is part of NATO. So if Russia goes into Estonia, it's incredibly important that we protect Estonia. Otherwise, our treaties don't mean anything. So, so then you would potentially do World War III to protect nah, Estonia? See that, then I told you, you lose me on that. World War III is really hyperbolic, super hyperbolic. So, like, whenever, like, sometimes some folks on the left, you like, get into a situation of well, what should we do about Russia? Sanctions, not sanctions, etc. Boom, World War III card, right? Well, so, so I you can do things further. about the, his incursion into Georgia, Ukraine. And Estonia short of launching nukes. Well, right, but again, if we're if we're what we're doing right now is we have a NATO buildup on his border, and that's like if Russian troops all of a sudden were right on the border of Mexico. Every single politician in the U.S. would say, "Get the guns ready, it's time to fight back." But for some reason, when we put NATO troops directly on his border, that's viewed as like, "Oh my God, if you're against that, you're a Putin puppet." And that's, no, that's no, I don't think you're a Putin puppet. I don't think anybody's a Putin puppet in, in that regard. But, um, but, and if you say, hey, maybe we should have Estonia, Latvia, et cetera, withdraw from NATO, that's an interesting argument. Uh, but, but it's a different thing to not defend Estonia if they are part of NATO. Well, let me just say, I'm, I'll just go on the record now and say I, I would not uh, send U.S. troops 
to fight to protect Estonia. And you could say that means I'm weak on Russia or whatever the case is. Sorry, but I don't think, yes, potentially risking, I'm not saying it would lead to World War III, but if we get into some sort of a hot war over Estonia, I don't think it's worth it to send, you know, men and women from Kentucky who never heard of Estonia until three and a half minutes ago to maybe fight and die to protect them. Um, so, and again, it, this all goes really back to the issue of NATO and uh, who's really at fault here? Like, again, I said I'm tentatively for the sanctions on uh, over the Crimea thing. And the reason I say that is because we lied to Russia when the Soviet Union was broken up. We said, listen, we're not going to move an inch towards your border. And then we kept moving towards their border. That's a provocative action. That's an aggressive action. And that's not something we would tolerate from them. Look at what happened when they put missiles in Cuba and pointed them at us. We said, oh, shit, we're, we're going to war. <laughs> so yeah. the fact that we have them in that position right now, um, again, I'm just trying to get people to see this from both sides. And that doesn't mean that Putin's a good guy. He's a menace against his own people. But I don't think he's a threat in the same way uh, that people are being hyperbolic and acting like, you know, what, he's going to lead to the fall of Europe. I, I don't agree with that. Yeah. So now let's let's um, let me just finish that topic and move on to other stuff that's more relevant. So, sure. in, in terms of like encroaching into Russia, it's a super fair point that if they were in uh, had troops in Mexico or Cuba, for example, that we would lose it, and we have. That's a fact. Uh, and that Estonia is an Estonia throwaway from Russia. I get all that. Uh, and maybe we shouldn't have brought. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have brought uh, NATO that close to Russia. We have a disagreement on, on me on on the just we have that treaty. We and we do. And and if you let him take Estonia, then he can take whatever country he wants. Now, luckily, he hasn't done that yet. Okay, so we and and I wouldn't want to signal to him that it might be okay to do that uh, because uh, look at what happened in the first Persian Gulf War. But that's okay. I, I get it. We people get both sides. Now let's go to the heart of the issue. Sure. So, uh, when when you talk about no evidence, I, I don't agree at all. Um, so, I and let's so let's figure out what we mean by that. So, mm -hmm. first of all, there's a recent um, story that just came out about the Dutch media had insiders from Dutch intelligence saying they tapped into Russia's hacking, so they hacked the Russians while the Russians were hacking us, and not only did they see in their computers that they were hacking the U.S. State Department. The Democratic Party, uh, the White House, even, and they told um, our intelligence officials that. Uh, but they actually tapped into the cameras and saw the Russians doing it with their own eyes. So, so the Russians doing what? Or the Russians hacking in to all the things that I mentioned: State Department, Democratic Party, etc. This is oh, okay. pre-Podesta so, emails. Okay. So Russian government was hacking our government, basically. Yes, the Russian gotcha. intelligence officials mm -hmm. that were in a in, in a university campus near Red Square that was doing it. So sure. that's evidence. Well, sure, but we're doing the exact same thing to them. Yes, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Okay. So, so should everybody sanction us because we do it to them? <laughs> I if mean, they could prove it. Yeah, they should. Uh, we I'm meddle in people's me. elections all the time. It's outrageous, wildly counterproductive, and has been fairly disastrous. Not only for the rest of the world, but for us. I mean, well, look at listen. all the coups we did. I mean, you want to talk about meddling? We did. We killed yeah. foreignly, uh, for democratically elected leaders in foreign countries. We did coups against guys like uh, uh, Mos Mossadegh in, in Iran, and then wondered yeah. why they hate us. So, if you say for us to not meddle in other elections, I love it, brother. Totally agree. But that doesn't sure. mean we should let the Russians do it to us either. So, so let me ask you then: What do you think the punishment should be for them in this instance? World War Three. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, see, then you get into a super interesting conversation because you got to break it down, right? So there is meddling in our election, and we have to break that further down. What does that mean exactly, right? Uh, and then there is the money laundering that we talked about. So let's do it one at a time. When you talk about meddling, okay, so if the charge, the heaviest charge the Democrats have, and I think when they started, this was their heaviest charge. Because they're actually not that bright, and they didn't even have any idea how corrupt Donald Trump actually is, right? And their main charge was they got they stole Podesta's emails and DNC emails, and and that's the biggest crime in American political history. No, that's I think that's small potatoes. 
Uh, and well, I'll go a step further. I'm in favor of that. I wanted to see those WikiLeaks emails where, look, that's a that's this. I view that this exact same as I view like the 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 Snowden Greenwald leaks. Like here, here's the information about how the NSA is spying on everybody. Oh well, thank you very much for the public service of releasing that. That should not have been a thing that the public doesn't get to see. By the same token, if one party's rigging a primary, yeah, I want to I want to see it. I don't care who the source is or how we got it. I'm still happy that we saw it. So I'm I'm only halfway towards you because on the okay. one hand I want to see the Pentagon Papers I want to see who Snowden released and Manning released and it it helps inform us in our so-called democracy uh, such as it is right uh, and so I, I'm in favor of that I you know people keep talking about oh my God WikiLeaks they had it yeah if the New York Times had it they'd publish it and they did right so yeah. mm -hmm. so I I don't see any issue with that at all so I'm not trying to punish WikiLeaks I'm not trying to punish anyone who Published it. I think it was super useful information, and we covered it on the show a lot. For which I we got tremendous heat from the Democratic establishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's one thing if that happens. It's another thing though if a foreign government, whether it's Russia, China, or Saudi Arabia, goes. Mm, I got uh, the emails of the Republicans and the Democrats, but I think the Republicans are going to help me, and the Democrats are going to hurt my interest. So I'll only release the Democratic ones, and ha ha. So I tricked you into voting for the guy who's actually going to do what I want. That's problematic. Sure. Now, so what I would say to that is number one, of course, I'm in favor of seeing whatever dirt the Republicans have too. I'm consistent in my approval of leaks. But number two, what are the consequences of? So let's assume that's true for a second. What are the consequences of that? What did so Putin preferred Trump? But why would he prefer Trump? Well. One of the reasons was Putin is backing Assad in Syria. That's his ally. Trump had said repeatedly on the campaign trail, look, I'm not going to get involved in Syria. Let's let Vladimir Putin handle ISIS and let's leave the Assad government alone. Now, I hate to be contrarian here, but I totally agree with them on that point. Now, unfortunately, Trump didn't actually follow through with that, which gets to the point of, I think, the evidence being flimsy overall for some sort of a deal between the Russian government and Trump or Putin and Trump because so at the end of the day what can you point to where you say oh no he definitely did uh, a deal with them you could point to for example oh he didn't implement the uh the sanctions over the election meddling uh but yeah that's kind of a big deal kind well but then but then that's only one fifth of the picture because uh for example Trump did just 3 days before that story came out Jenk on that Friday CNN had an article about how they just implemented a new round of sanctions over Crimea. So, okay, he doesn't do one set of sanctions, but he does a different set of sanctions. Then, like I said, he armed Ukrainian rebels who are anti-Russia. So it's a weird thing to do if you're that guy's puppet to arm the people who are fighting him. Then he bombed the Syrian government. That happened a few months ago. And then he, they also recently, the State Department announced this, we're staying in Syria indefinitely. You know, that was a huge story to me, but it got next to no coverage uh, in the media because, again, that's one of those stories where if you cover that, the only logical takeaway is, well, he's definitely not acting like Putin's puppet if he wants to permanently militarily occupy the nation to be against the government that is Putin's ally. That's a weird way to be a puppet to somebody. And then, like I brought up before, he kept NATO troops on Russia's doorstep. They're there right now. And he didn't approve the Exxon oil deal. So yes, I, I grant you that, okay, he didn't uh, implement the, the sanctions over the so-called election meddling. That's one policy that can be viewed as pro-Putin, but I just gave you five others that are massively anti-Putin. And this goes back to the point I made at the beginning, why Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabia issue is bigger to me and the Israel issue is bigger to me. We haven't even discussed the Israel one in detail because if you do a deal with those governments, the downsides are actually worse. So the downside of a Saudi deal is we just gave a theocratic dictatorship $350 billion worth of weapons and they're bombing women and children in Yemen. Uh, you know, the consequences of a deal with Israel is Jared Kushner, for example, took a lot of money from Israeli banks. And in turn, the Israeli government called the Trump administration when he was president elect and they got them to fight back. Uh, against the UN. They said, call all the countries you have connections with at the UN and try to get them to be against the, the resolution condemning the illegal settlements. 
So that's collusion where they're doing something in favor of a government. And I think it's way more damaging than, for example, if he did Putin's bidding and stayed out of Syria. In fact, I would have liked it if they stayed out of Syria. So look, the, the fact that you might like a couple of those positions, whether they were derived from collusion or not, uh, and as part of a deal with Trump or not, to me is immaterial. Yeah, sure. I, I don't want to do bombing in Syria either, but, that, that, but if I find out it was because Trump, not out of the goodness of his heart or because he had the correct policy position, did it because of what he owed the Russians, I'm going to have an issue with that. Uh, sure, that, on on principle, sure you could do that. Yeah, and 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 come on, look at the way that he did the Syrian bombing. Oh golly gee, I am going to bomb those dastardly Syrians. I will bomb an an airway that they are not a runway that they are not using. I will bomb uh, old planes that they are not using. The new planes are in the hangar. I where I know exactly where they are, but I will not bomb them. But look at me getting tough on Russia. Well, why stay there indefinitely then? Okay, so that's point number two. Great question. So Donald Trump is, not, thank God, not the dictator. There are a lot of things he wants to do, and he keeps getting blocked. Uh, everybody knows that he didn't want to do the sanctions on Russia. They passed it 98 to 2 in the Senate, overwhelmingly in the House, and he signed it, even though he said, I don't want to sign it. Uh, he had to sign it. And then there is, yes, a four step play. You can call him deep state, you can call him. Mid state, you can call whatever you like, right? Or hawkish all, on Russia. All state, yeah. they're all in favor of uh, hawkishness everywhere, and sure. including on Russia. So they put a ton of pressure to, hey, oh, Mr. President, you got to stay in there. And the knucklehead from time to time goes, oh, yeah, okay, who's the last guy in the building? Okay, that guy? All right, sure. fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and now John Kelly's his chief of staff, and he's largely uh, driving policy. Now, when you, uh, on, the, on the issue of the sanctions, one of the things that they quote unquote implemented was they came up with a list of Russian oligarchs and then said, okay, here's the list because you made us do it because it's in this goddamn bill that we didn't want to sign. Uh, what are we going to do about it? Oh, nothing. We're not going to freeze their assets. We're not going to do anything. It's just a list. Okay, are you happy now? Uh, so, no, the main thing is the sanctions. And I said that he would not impose those. Uh, then he was forced to sign it. And then he refused to impose them. Anyway, even though it's his legal obligation to do so, gee, I wonder why he did that. Uh, but again, do you think, Kyle, it's because that he has a ideology that he thinks on political no, no, philosophy? No, no, no. Of course I don't. Should, <laughs> come uh, right. Of course I don't. But here's the thing: I don't care if he somehow stumbles upon the right policy for the wrong reasons. Fine. Now I hear you that like okay, you could object to that on principle and say, well, M Mueller should uh, should still do his thing, and I say I agree with you on that. But at the end of the day, I find it hard for me to get mad if he stumbles on doing policies that I agree with. So, for example, let's say let's just say for argument's sake, it was because of collusion that he decided we're not gonna go into Syria at all. We're gonna stay totally out. I would say, well, that's good. <laughs> I'm happy that we're staying out of Syria. And even if it was a horrible way in which we got to that conclusion, it's just hard for me to get angry if like, he stumbles upon doing the, the uh, proper policy. But then this gets to a deeper question, which is, uh, what's the end game? Because again, I agree. I like that Mueller is taking out his cabinet one by one, Flynn, Manafort on financial crimes and money laundering. And in fact, I think my case is bolstered by what uh, Steve Bannon said, because Steve Bannon said, no, you're not going to. They buried the lead in an article from a few weeks ago. And basically, Steve Bannon said, you're, it's money laundering, stupid. That's what he argued. So in other words, the, all the headlines were like, Bannon calls meeting with Russian nobody treasonous. But then you read the article, and in like paragraph six, they're like, Bannon's like, no, it's the money laundering. They're going to get him on the money laundering. Which, okay, good. Th that's good. That's great. But, and this is, I think, another part of my frustration on this issue with the Democrats is, Cenk, there is no end game here because let's say you knock out all of uh, Trump's cabinet, great, knock out all of them, Kushner, Ivanka, whoever, I don't care, knock them all out. Then you're left with Donald Trump and what are you gonna have, the overwhelmingly uh, majority, overwhelming majority Republican Congress impeach him? And then even if yes. you do that, you wake up the next day, you get Mike Pence, who's just as bad if not maybe worse, because he's actually sly and clever, and he's a true fundamentalist Christian Kool-Aid drinker and a believer in you know trickle-down economics and all that stuff. He's Donald Trump, who sounds slightly more intelligent with a smirk 
and a true <coughs> belief in Christian fundamentalism. So, so Kyle, it, look, there's let like, me just just real quick. Let me yeah. just say one more thing, real quick, which is, I, I think this issue allows the Democrats to resist without resisting, because any every second they're sucking the air out of the room by going on and on, Russia, 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 Russia. That's a second they're not talking about Medicare for all or free college or a living wage or ending the wars or a new New Deal or any of the things that are actually going to get them to win an election. And I was going to save this for later, but I'll just bring it up now. Uh, there was an article for, uh, in The Hill in June, and this is from a poll that they did. Listen to this, Cenk. A majority of voters, I'm quoting from the article, a majority of voters are against the Russia investigations and are eager to see Congress shift its focus to healthcare, terrorism, national security, the economy, and jobs. Those are the findings of the latest Harvard-Harris poll survey. 64% of voters said the investigations into President Trump and Russia are hurting the country. So in other words, my, my point is, even if you're right about all of this, it's still terrible politics, and it's turning into Democrat Benghazi. Even if you say there's a there there, it's turning into Democrat Benghazi, and it's going to lose the Democrats in election. All right, good. There's plenty for me to disagree there, uh, I, but also plenty for me to agree on. So let's let's get going on that. So first of all, uh, when you say um, this is resisting without resisting, absolutely right, totally agree. So it's an excuse not to talk about policy issues because their donors don't want them to talk about policy. Talking about Russia is easy. It's an easy way out. It doesn't cost their donors a dime, right? In fact. It might make defense contractors more money. So totally agree on that. And they're using it as an excuse. Um, but Kyle, I have an issue with sometimes like sometimes it appears that what you're saying is, well, I like the policy position he's winding up at, so nah, whatever. Right? No, I mean I might like a couple of those policy positions I, I he winds that, up at, but I care deeply that how he got there, because that affects the next set of elections and the next set of elections and whether we have a guy who is controlled by a foreign government that is super important and relevant so i but like he did you five don't care against against putin so how can if he did one policy for putin not implementing the election uh, meddling sanctions but he did the five other ones i listed that but were against not, i don't kyle, think you can no, reasonably, no, no. reasonably conclude he's his puppet no kyle that's crazy talk so all right, I shouldn't say that. Okay, yeah, but that's not anywhere near crazy. That's no, accurate. <laughs> no, first of all, uh, you think tr f they changed, for example, the the, po the Republican policy, and then this was uh, brought up at the time, even before we knew anything about the collusion, um, to say that we're uh, they changed the, our policy, the Republican policy on Ukraine. That was real. They changed it now because Trump doesn't have the political force to be able to do it. When he's in pre president, doesn't mean he's not trying to do it. So, can he roll unilaterally roll back uh, NATO and say, "Okay, I'm kicking Estonia and Latvia, etc." out? Of course not. Of course not. So, if you say, "Oh, well, he still has troops on Russia's border," that has nothing to do with Trump. He couldn't possibly change that if he, even if he wanted to, and made it his top effort. So, on the issue of the Syria uh, and and the bombings. Like I told you, those are totally nonsense, fake bombings, and and I don't agree. By the way, oh go really? Ahead. Come on, man! No, the new planes are sitting the there. And they don't bomb them, and they bomb the old planes that are already broken down. That's the going. Look at me, Daddy. I am against Putin and Assad. No, 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 no. But that's not the only time they bombed the Syrian government. There were four or five occasions where they bombed the Syrian government, even in the midst of them fighting ISIS. One time they did it. So that's not anything to scoff at. That's they're on the wrong side, and they're on in on in the process of being on the wrong side. They're escalating with Putin, and that's another one of my concerns: is that as we keep pushing towards a further escalation, the Democrats are resisting from the right, not from the left. And like for example, yeah, like that's here, deeply troubling, let, and I agree with that. Well, let me give you one more example because I think this one really paints a stark picture. So the other day there was a story about how a Russian jet flew five feet away from a, a U.S. jet. And you b didn't hear anything in the media and nothing from the Democrats. Now, if the Democrats really wanted to resist, here's how you resist on that. You go, oh, my goodness, we almost got into a confrontation with Russia. What is Trump doing? Why is he being so reckless? 
What we need him to do is get out of there. What are our planes doing on the Black Sea by Russia's border? Why are we there? Get them out of there because we can't say Trump is a thin-skinned dictator, buffoon, madman with a terrible temper. And oh, yeah, isn't it the better thing to do to fly U.S. planes near Russia's border and put NATO on the border? I think if you believe he's a crazy person, which I do, then you should be screaming at him and resisting from the left. Say, get the troops out of there. Get the planes out of there. I don't want to accidentally start a conflict with Russia. And again, my point is the Democrats are not making that argument. They didn't even mention that at all because they're resisting from the right. Every time they resist Trump on on uh, Russia, they're saying, well, I don't know why you're not putting more troops on NATO's border. Maybe you're Putin's puppet. And that's, yeah, a, no, that's a problem. I, I, of course, am not in that camp. We're both deeply progressive. So, uh, you know, I, I think that um, uh, that conflict is totally unnecessary. I think the Democrats, I'll go further, um, on the issue of the FISA warrants. Now they're in a position where the, they're the establishment and they're fighting for uh, FISA to, uh, court to do more uh, spying on uh, Americans. And so, I, do I think the surveillance of Carter Page was justified? Yes. Do I think they should do warrantless surveillance of American citizens? No, no. And yes, the Adam Schiff's of the world, et cetera, are now pushing from the right and it's gross. Uh, but I, I think that they could be wrong. And by the way, let me further agree with you on the politics of it. I mean, Elizabeth Warren was on the show. Now, to be fair to her, it was really a while back at this point. But, yeah, mm -hmm. but she said the number one issue in the 2018 elections with the Democratic Party should be Russia. And I was thinking, no, that's a terrible idea. Terrible politics on that. So for me, I think they should do the Russia investigation even though it might be bad politics. And even bad policy in terms of pressuring, uh, so-called pressuring Trump to go in the, in the wrong direction. They should do it because we need to find out if the president is working for us or working for a different country. That's monumentally important. So I can't say, well, I kind of like some of his policies in that regard. So, eh, right? No, not eh. I, I, but then I, you're abandoning the money laundering thing you said, though, because originally you said, well, look, this is really just about money laundering. But now you just said, like, no, we need to keep investigating to see if he's working for a foreign country. Now, when I hear that, I think that's really goofy and that's not what's happening. He's not Putin's puppet. Like, no, that's definitely silly. we have, like, the heart of the disagreement. Yeah. So, I, I think he did money laundering. You think he's a puppet to Vladimir Putin. No, I think he did money laundering, and hence he's a puppet to Vladimir Putin. So to go back to the conversation we're having about what's important and not important in the range. So the so-called stolen emails, anyone could have gotten those emails, any media organization could have published those emails. I think it was, in fact, the Russians who got it, or maybe it was the Russians and someone else. But I don't think that's a thing that, to your point about what's the end game here, that's not a thing that you take a president down over. I mean. If Hillary Clinton had gotten access to Trump's emails from whatever source and use it during the campaign, nobody would have said a peep if you ask me. So even if they think that that's a huge deal, they'll never impeach him over that. That is not enough. I think obstruction of justice is the middle ground and I don't know if that's impeachable because you know then the it depends. It depends on how bad it is. And we can see with our own eyes, it's pretty bad. He's firing everyone who's investigating him. So I don't know how that one gets resolved. I, to me, money laundering is on the other end of the scale. Really, really bad. And we got to get him the hell out of office because he's a lifelong criminal. And one of the, uh, the criminal deals that he made, if we're right about that, and hence the need for the investigation, is a deal with Russian oligarchs who all work for Vladimir Putin. And they're not interested in, oh, well, we had a deal with Donald and he has all of our money, all this money that, of ours. But ah, we don't want to ask for anything in return. We're Russian oligarchs. Of course yeah. they ask for something in return. No, this is, you know, this is definitely the crux of our disagreement because, listen, what I would say is, even after hearing all that, I still don't for the life of me understand why what wouldn't be put front and center is the collusion that Trump did with a foreign government, which led to weapons being sold to them and a genocide being carried out with those weapons. Because even if I grant you everything you just said, 
we already have all the evidence on the table for an even worse case of collusion. But again, there's a reason why that's not the issue being brought up. And the issue being brought up is the Russia issue, because look, the the deep state and all of the politicians don't care that we did Israel's bidding and there were corrupt deals in the process done to try to get other countries to not care about illegal settlements under international law. That's a giant scandal. And they don't care that our weapons are currently funding a genocide in Yemen. They don't care because they're our allies. So we look the other way. And even though there's an even clearer example of a corrupt deal and Trump doing the bidding of those governments, it doesn't even register. But the, the final thing, Jenk, that I wanted to talk about, it, we didn't even really get to it yet, is the effect that this is having on the media, because I think that that's probably one of the biggest uh, issues here. So uh, just to give a few examples, Maddow, I already said this before, but she just flat out called for more NATO troops to be on Russia's border. The Intercept actually did a study of Maddow's show over like a, a time period that was, I think, a little over a month. And they found that 53% of all Maddow segments were about Russia. Every other <laughs> issue combined was less than that. Then there was a FAIR study, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting. They do some uh, great work. And they uh, looked at MSNBC coverage, and they found that MSNBC covered Russia more in one day than Yemen, the, the issue of the genocide in Yemen, all year. Russia got more coverage in one day than Yemen all year. 5,000% uh, more coverage. Um, and listen, the point that very few people know about, because this isn't really reported on at all, but you know about it and other you know, progressive hosts know about it, is this is having a chilling effect on us. Because, for example, uh, YouTube just decided we're going to label uh, all outlets that are funded by foreign governments. And the idea is they're trying to scare people off of looking at certain outlets. So for like Tom Hartman works for RT, Ed Schultz works for RT. These are people who are not Vladimir Putin's mouthpieces, but they work for RT. And now there's a warning banner across the screen. But look at the effect this is having. Like, for example, uh, ever since they say, hey, Russian fake news affected the election in a negative way, we really need to take action on this. They change the algorithms. Google and YouTube change the algorithms. And now they deprioritize all independent creators. And they put an onus on outlets that are established outlets, corporate outlets, CNN, MSNBC, and all those kinds of outlets. And the reality is, Jenk, those outlets, I would argue, spread fake news a hell of a lot more than I ever did. And, you know, I'm, and I'm talking about stuff like they referred to George W. Bush doing torture as enhanced interrogation because the administration wanted them to, to, to refer to it like that. They all, you know, were beating the war drum to go to uh, Iraq. So, but they never get punished. Establishment outlets would never get punished for doing fake news. But outlets that are independent outlets that don't do fake news are now deprioritized in the algorithms. And this is crushing left-wing media. So alternate, for example, Jenk, they had a cut of, I think it was like 60% drop in their traffic. And this has happened with Truth Out. This happened with Truth Dig. And basically the idea is they're taking the fact that fake news exists and they're going, okay, now we're now going to use this to crack down on all dissenting voices and independent media outlets. And it's a very convenient argument for the establishment to make to suit their ends. And look, the problem with that is at the end of the day, I don't know what else to call that but McCarthyism and a red scare because they're using the Russia issue to silence all dissent from independent media and just try to tamper our voices down. So uh, on that front, again, I agree with you and we agree on policy. So uh, are they using it uh, for bad purpose? Yes. I mean, um, some of the stuff on RT uh, propaganda for the Russians? Yes. Is Tom Hartman's program uh, propaganda? No. No, it's not. And but they, you get the banner either way. Um, well, you could call Al Jazeera propaganda because they're run by the government of Qatar, and they're not going to say anything bad about Qatar. On the other hand, they do good news in in other realms and cover things that the American government don't doesn't want you to see, right? Uh, and BBC, you could label them propaganda. They're owned by the British government, right? But we don't call them propaganda. 
and does the BBC constantly tear into British imperialism, uh, etc.? No, they tweak it, mick resistance, if you will, right? Uh, CNN is owned by giant multinational corporations that have their own agenda. I could argue that's propaganda for Time Warner. I could argue that MSNBC is propaganda for Comcast, which has a more direct effect on our policy issues than maybe even our government, right? Or someone else's government, the Venezuelan government, etc. So I totally agree with you on that, and I think that there is fear mongering going around. And by the way, they also wanted to beat up on Facebook and Google, the traditional television stations and networks. This allowed them to beat up on Facebook and Google. Do I think Pence is a dangerous guy, and is it a big win if Pence is president? Yes, I think he's dangerous. No, I don't think it's a big win if Pence is president. But I don't want to make the same mistake as the other side and say, since I don't agree with those policy positions, I'm going to look the other way. So they say, well, I like Saudi Arabia bombing Yemen, so I'm going to look the other way from Trump's corruption on Saudi Arabia. I don't want to do likewise. I, so I don't like that, that they're cracking down on independent media. No one's more affected by that than we are. But because of that, I don't want to look the other way from Trump's corruption on Russia, which I think is enormously real. And which, if you believe money laundering, you think is enormously real. I mean, money laundering is a massive crime. And, and there's a reason why you do that. There's another end to it. So if our president did money laundering with a foreign country, shouldn't we arrest them? Yeah, so it, you know, I, again, I support what Mueller's doing, and I, here's my prediction. I think he's gonna he knock. What do you do? Knocked out Flynn, knocked out Manafort. Um, I, I mean, I, he's probably got some tricks up his sleeve. But Jank, my point is, at the end of the day, he's you're never gonna hear Mueller's getting Trump on treason. Mueller's getting Trump Trump on some a crime like word. that. Treason's a okay, loaded well, word. It, it, we, you could dismiss it. Look, I, I might. Uh, get worked up one day and say, well, that sounds like treason. But in terms of convicting him on treason, I agree with you. But convicting him on money laundering is plenty. And by the way, if in return well, they have for to impeach what him, Trump right? they got, can't, they can't indict he, him, can he? He promised Russia certain policy positions. Well, that's as close to treason as it gets. Again, I think there's already proof he did that with Israel and Saudi Arabia. So we have all the evidence we need, but they're not ex going down that path. They want to try to prove the harder case to prove on Russia. But my question to you is, isn't it they would have to impeach, right? Isn't it there a, an open legal question as to whether or not you can indict a sitting president? Yeah, so I, I believe that impeachment is possible under certain circumstances. Uh, if the crimes are significant enough, hence the stolen e so-called stolen emails ain't going to do it. There's no way the Republicans are going to impeach over that. And I think Mueller would be too embarrassed to bring that case up because it's, in my opinion, relatively minor. Um, but if you're talking about money laundering of hundreds of millions of dollars, that's a massive case. And then the poll numbers of the Republicans start to slip back down to where they were about a month ago, minus 14 to the Democrats. And then all of a sudden, the Republicans will find some principle that they had forgotten they had, and yes, impeach him if that's a fact case, fact scenario. Yeah, I just I don't know how it would play out in the minds of the American people. If if I actually think there's a more likely chance, not the scenario you gave, but Trump fires Mueller, and then that leads to potential impeachment. I think that's more likely than the scenario that we were just talking, like he gets him on some sort of grand crime and then they move to impeach. Um, yeah, I just don't know, and even Kyle, if all that were to unfold, quick. just one second, even if all that were to unfold, I don't know politically if that, I think that might actually hurt the Democrats, believe it or not. No, because, I, so. I mean, okay, if you but say so, but I just, okay. people care about putting food on the table and paying their light bill and, you know, focusing on stuff like that. So even if I were to agree with you on all the substance, uh, like I said before, I don't know if the politics of it are going to line up. But Jake, I hear I'm you. Like Trump is a politics. terrible guy. I know. I understand that you're doing it for principled reasons. And my point is, listen. Even if you want to take a principled stand, there's already so much. Like Trump already violated the emoluments clause on day one of his campaign, Jake. Like the guy, he does business in 12 different countries. 
Okay, he takes money from all different foreign governments, not just Russia. And like I said, I think there's an even clear case. He did Israel, Saudi Arabia and Turkey's bidding. So all that stuff is there. We already have the case for emoluments. So this stuff is a lot harder to prove in a, in a court of law when you have to prove intent and all that other stuff. So I, I just think. Um, so, at the, so Kyle, yeah. look, it, you know, I think he did the emoluments. If we could uh, get the establishment won, to yeah. agree and, and that's why they got him out, great. Because he also broke the law in that regard. But again, realistically, they're not going to do that. And that is deeply frustrating. So, but that doesn't mean that they sh also shouldn't investigate Russia. And so, in, in terms of that investigation, look, let's just go over it real quick. Uh, all the stuff, not even all the stuff, just a quarter of the stuff that's public. Uh, Don Jr. and Eric Trump have both said, yes, we got money for the golf courses and our properties. From the Russians, they admitted it themselves. And one was in 2008, one was later. Uh, Eric Trump said to a golf magazine reporter, uh, "They said, where'd you get the money? You guys bank went bankrupt all these times. Where'd you get the money for the golf courses?" And Eric Trump said, "Oh, the Russians. Uh, apparently, they really, really like golf." Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And um, there's a server in, in Pennsylvania, in the middle of Pennsylvania. That's Donald Trump's server. All the top uh, cybersecurity experts in the world say he keeps getting pinged by Russia. 80% of the pings are from uh, Russia. You know who's pinging it? Alpha Bank. They don't know what I the pings are, but that ain't I no think, coincidence. I think that story was retracted. Yeah, I, I don't know what you mean by retracted. Well, I'll send you the article. There's an article in The Intercept which lists that among articles that have been. They said, we messed up this one. This no, isn't okay, real. I'll take a look at it. I'll yeah. read it. But last I saw, I don't see any reason. They seem to have excellent evidence. The other 18% of the pings, by the way, were coming from the DeVos family, another wild coincidence. And then we know Eric Prince, also from the DeVos family, went to Seashells and met with the Russians and some Gulf country uh, people in a place where they wouldn't be caught having a secret meeting. Why is Eric Prince going to have a secret meeting with the Russians? Because they don't have a deal? <laughs> so. No, I Jake, I think he did money laundering. You're preaching the choir, and I think it's even worse than what you're laying out because I think he did money laundering for the Russian mafia, which you know is arguably even worse than doing it for I don't know some government officials. Uh, so I think there's enough there, um, but again, I think the the my where I differ from you is I think that the effects of how this is all playing out and the consequences of the hyper focus on that issue is just leaving so many stones unturned and leaving the most important arguments the Democrats should be making at the side of the road along with the media, the same thing. And just the final thing I wanna say real fast is, so there was a story, I should probably send it to you because I don't know if you, saw, if you saw this because I think it was only in one outlet. I think it was the International Business Times. Nobody else picked it up. But there was a story that basically proved collusion between Donald Trump and the predatory uh, predatory payday lender industry to the point where they gave him some ridiculous amount of money uh, in a variety of different ways. They gave it to um, Mick, Mick Mulvaney, his head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They gave it to him at his inauguration. It was some ridiculous, I think it was over a million dollars they gave him at his inauguration. And then they scrapped all of the rules on the predatory payday lending industry that were supposed to go into place and made it so that they're allowed to charge 950%. And again, we can trace all these lines here to show exactly how corrupt they are and exactly how much they're screwing over regular people. And my concern, Jake, is nobody's talking about this. And this is the stuff where you hammer him and you can win an election. And I think that it's mostly blowing off steam when we talk about the Russia thing, because there's so much conspiracy mongering over it and leaps of logic that it makes the Democrats look unhinged. Yeah, and uh, so look, when you say uh, Rachel Maddow shouldn't cover Russia with 53% of her stories, I say, <laughs> of course, that's wildly. I, I, I would hope, yes. Yeah, that's wildly disproportionate and preposterous, right? Uh, and uh, but if. When you say conspiracy theories regarding Russia, that's where you lose me, and that's where I get frustrated. But they're, they're, but Jenk, they're, they're like right out in the examples. open. Why has he fired everyone investigating him? Because he did it. No, no, he no, no, no. Jenk, but, 
you're disregarding the fact that there are like six or seven different stories that have officially been retracted. Those are the conspiracies I'm talking about, the conspiracy mongers who jump to conclusions and then they have to retract the story a week and a half later. So that's what I'm referring to. And you've seen those articles, I'm sure yeah, you have. And Kyle, the, the story you referenced was uh, unfortunately in this insanely corrupted system that we have, run-of-the-mill corruption. And, and, and the establishment is never going to convict them on that or go after them on that because they all do the same thing. They but take, know, they take the contributions that's the problem. and they that's give their donors exactly what they want. That's the problem. So I agree. But that's what's driving me crazy <laughs> though, Kyle, which is that like we agree on all that stuff, but that doesn't mean and we should let Russia go. I'm not, but I'm not saying that. I'm saying you want to get them on money laundering. You want to do the investigation. I just told you a thousand times. I support what Robert Mueller is doing. But my whole point, Jank, my whole argument is everybody needs to pump their brakes a little bit if you're on the Democratic side because there's a lot of overreaching going on on this issue. And not only that, but there's also a lot of downsides to overfocusing on it, like the thousand I just mentioned, the effect on media and all that other stuff, the yeah. weak arguments of the Democrats, so on and so forth. So I think at the end of the day, our, our agreement will remain simply on money laundering. But the effects of all this and everything outside of that, I don't think that we're going to see eye to okay. eye on that. Uh, so we're at an end, and I think we accomplished our mission. We found out what we agree and disagree on, and uh, unsurprisingly, we actually agree on uh, a huge majority of, of the things that we discussed. And I think that it is just a matter of, largely a matter of emphasis as to, yes. A, yes. A, as to those I issues. And I don't agree with mainstream media and their obsessive nonstop exclusive coverage of Russia, uh, exclusive of anything else. And I agree totally it's in avoidance of real issues. But I believe we can do real issues and talk about his corruption at the same time. And yes, his corruption is terrible and legion on many fronts, but also on Russia. And I think that if a president did money laundering, that's a massive crime. And especially if he promised the other side something in return, like for example, not enforcing sanctions uh, that have been the force of law, well, that's, that's as bad as it gets. And Godspeed to Robert Mueller. Sounds good. All right, we did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kyle, thanks for joining us. Excellent conversation. Everybody yeah, check fun. out Secular Talk. Um, and, and don't let anybody tell you that, uh, that the establishment media is any better than independent media. I think that you're going to get way closer to the truth and the facts of all these different issues if you watch Kyle's show than if you watched anything on cable news. If you like this interview and you're at the end, so apparently you liked it a little bit, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. You can watch them live as they happen if you're a member. Only members get that. Go to tytnetwork.com slash join and you get not only interviews live, you get the Young Turks live, you get Aggressive Progressive live, old school, and all the commercial free. Come join us right now, tytnetwork.com slash join.